Mr. Peter Reynolds, Senior Analyst from ARC Advisory Group USA, to present Developing Your Organization to Secure the Fourth Industrial, uh, industrial Revolution. Good morning, everyone. So I feel a little bit like the alumni of KIAX. And I happen to be the third Canadian to present today, so I don't know what that means, if that was by accident or, or not. So if you detect the Canadian accent, that's why. So uh, my, my first opportunity to get to know KIAX was back in 2015. And, and at the time, I presented something that was probably a little bit, and it was securing the industrial internet of things. 2015, I had the, uh, the and uh, also uh, also take uh, 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 participate in a panel, and again, continuing on with the subject. I think, uh, let me see, I just want to make sure I've got the right microphone here. I'm moving back and forth. Can everybody still hear me okay? Good, okay. Um, but, so today, uh, you, you certainly heard some great presentations this morning, much of the technical nature, but today I want to talk about something quite different. Today I'm going to talk about the people side of, uh, of uh, cybersecurity. So the, the, my topic is developing your organization to secure the fourth industrial revolution. So um, a little bit about me. Um, if I could rewind the clock almost a decade, I was the automation manager at a North American refinery. And this was a typical medium complexity refinery, 350,000 barrels per day, mixed supplier environment, and I happened to have the cell phone and I was on call. So, so first of all, how many people in the room have ever been touched by a virus? At home, at work, just raise your hands. Okay, maybe about 30% uh, of you. Okay. So this was one uh, average, uh, average evening and I received a call from the shift manager at uh, this refinery. His voice was shaking. I happened to be uh, on call for the automation systems at the time. And he says, Peter, get in here right away. He says, we don't know what's wrong. Our computer screens in the control room are rebooting continuously. About once a minute, and they had, they had no idea. My first question was, what's happening with the automation system? He says, we think it's working. So, of course, I got in my car and I drove uh, as quickly as I could to, to the refinery and checked in through security and got to the control room. And there was about 11 operators and, and we had a nice little setup of, of automation uh, screens uh, uh, on one uh, section of the console and then another section had, uh, had the information systems or the enterprise systems in the email. And, uh, and, and, I, and I looked around and I could clearly see there was no interruption to the automation and safety systems and the enterprise uh, systems were clearly in infected. So back then, we didn't have a great plan. The plan was to uh, disconnect the, uh, the, the enterprise uh, internet systems at the firewall and I just happened to have a key because I was the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, on-duty uh, uh, technician at the time. We disconnected the internet, we checked all of our systems, we made sure everything was okay. Well, most things were okay. We had something called a demilitarized zone or a segregated network that had some business-connected uh, uh, computer systems, and they were rebooting. So we had, uh, we had uh, some, uh, some issues. But w the, the number one question that, that I got from the, uh, the general manager of the refinery at that time was not so much about the automation systems or about the, any of the, any of the te technical aspects. The number one question that, that I received going forward was, is the workforce ready to deal with this? So my, so my presentation today is going to be more about ITOT. I'm going to talk a little bit about research and ITOT convergence, what that means from, uh, from an infrastructure and technology point of view, and what that means from, uh, from a, a people point of view, because I think that they're, they're uh, both uh, different. So just uh, my background. So I'm an analyst and a consultant. So the company I work for is ARC Advisory Group, and I've got about 20 years in, uh, in automation and o OT. I spend uh, a lot of time doing research and consulting and uh, focus stri strictly on the automation and manufacturing systems. So we think that we're a little bit unique because we all come from uh, the plant and we have IT, OT expertise. So what that means is, is we understand the application of technology at the plant and we understand the interfaces to the IT systems. Um, 
This is what I would say is our research uh, uh, benchmarking uh, ecosystem. So the re research I present today is going to be based on interviews with uh, some of the suppliers of technology, such as Honeywell and uh, Rockwell Automation, SAP, ABB, and other companies. And, and uh, companies on the top are all asset owners who ha help uh, contribute to benchmarking uh, and, uh, and best practices. So common questions. Back when I presented in 2014, securing the industrial Internet of Things, it was really a foreign uh, uh, topic. Not many, not many co uh, companies were thinking about connecting sensors to the cloud. But nowadays, there is, we've gone even a step further. Many, many companies are calling or saying what we're in is the fourth industrial revolution. So they want to know, there's a, there's a recognition that architectures are evolving. And they want to know how to secure the systems when the architectures are involving. But more, more importantly, uh, 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 bosses and managers, they want, they want to know how to develop people and organizations and build competency that matters, given that we're on at the, uh, the verge of the uh, fourth industrial revolution. So what is it? And uh, th you've probably seen a couple of versions of this, uh, of this slide where you see value on the vertical axis and a timeline on the bottom. This particular access, we've got skills and competency on the vertical access, which is what I'm going to talk about today. But if you think about the first revolution, which was really about mechanization, which was the first uh, um, uh, water wheels and the, and the develop of the steam engine back in the 1700s, and then the second industrial revolution really came about with mass production and, and electrifying plants and allowing plants to, to be able to run 724. And then the revolution was really more about back into the uh, 1980s. I think I'm cutting out here, folks, so sorry about that. Uh, and then the fourth industrial revolution, which is the one that we're talking about right now, this is really about the connection of the cyber physical systems. And it, from a perspective of, uh, of uh, running plants and skills and competency, my message today is really going to be about how this technology has changed with the fourth industrial revolution and what it means. We're seeing, uh, and, and certainly um, what Sam presented uh, in the region, we've got Amazon Web Services and Microsoft setting up a public cloud uh, in your area. That is the, the same as uh, many other parts of the world. Um, so we're seeing the advent of, um, uh, of algorithms uh, such as machine learning and other technologies that, that are finding their way down to the plant floor and they're being used by uh, OT technicians or, en or engineers or other plant specialists to uh, improve uh, production. So what does this mean? We say that there's, there's a transformation at the cloud and at the edge. And, back, and if, I, if I rewind back to 2014 time, time period, it was probably the first time we started talking about cloud. Now we're also talking about edge computing, but edge computing is a little bit different than what you might have in your plants today, given that there's a lot of obsolescence and a lot of uh, legacy that you deal with today. So this is really what we would call is a dramatic shift from the ISA 95 or the Purdue model to something that we call ITOT convergence. So what is it? So we, we, if I can talk about the conceptual view of ITOT convergence, we really look at it two ways. We look at it uh, from an organizational perspective and we look at it from an information technology perspective. So information technology, fundamentally IT is there to run the business through, through uh, transactional systems. Operational technology, however, is about executing the, the physical value add through real-time systems and the scope of, and, uh, and ownership of each is uh, very different. So IT, of course, tends to cover business, finance, supply chain, sales orders, order to cash, uh, procurement, where there, whereas IT tends to deal with spectrums that are more about the physical transformation of, of different uh, products, and these are very task-centric. The endpoint for each organization, of course, tends to be very different. For IT, that tends to be more uh, about um, uh, computers and the humans that are adding value to the system, whereas the OT tends to be more about the physical assets such as pumps and ves vessels and other catalysts in order to make the production work. The, the focus of the IT tends to be more portfolio-centric, and the focus for IT tends to be more about safety and physical assets and making sure things are safe and secure. So, but what's happening from a convergence perspective, and, and I often get the question, well, does IT-OT convergence mean 
we have one organization and they all work together and harmoniously we just make sure that we satisfy production and business. Well, yes and no. So what we do know is happening is that from, a, from a, an outward perspective, uh, uh, IT vendors with technology experience continue to support information technology. Uh, these are vendors uh, such as SAP that specialize in understanding the, the application through business process and, uh, and systems. But on the OT side, specialty OT vendors with, are adding uh, modern IT to their portfolio. And this is uh, from, a, from a research pers perspective, we see this across all the suppliers in the, in the OT space. They're all making an effort to, to modernize uh, the technologies, whether it's uh, Docker and container technologies or Kubernetes or making the systems available through, uh, through cloud. So you've, many of you, if you're in the OT uh, side, you're probably familiar with, uh, with this. Uh, what th this is uh, the conventional Purdue model for computer integrated manufacturing. So many of the systems were built, you know, the, if, you, if you've got uh, DCSs or uh, automation systems that are 10, 20, 30 years old, this is the mo model that you followed. Um, starts at level one with uh, sensors and actuators. Uh, automation systems, PLCs and DCS is at level two. You had some plant software, then you had a plant DMZ, which was the only place where you could go to get data from the enterprise. Then you had this thing called a firewall. And of course, if you're on the enterprise space, you didn't go past the firewall in order to, to get da data. Well, today, this uh, looks uh, very different. We see most of the vendors are heading towards a much mo more open model where you have some type of a cloud platform for data, you have edge management devices, uh, gateways that are dropped onto your, your level two networks to, to collect data or perform analytics. You have embedded systems at the, edge, at the edge, and the technology layer now for the OT specialist or the plant technology has changed quite a bit. Now it's about delivering uh, not just uh, 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 PID control or safety or running the plant, the technology layer is really now about providing uh, analytics and wearable technology to keep operators safe, uh, using mobile devices, uh, video systems, uh, procedure management software. There's a lot of new technologies that, uh, that are available now at, at the enterprise. And what does that look like? The supplier ecosystem has completely changed. There's some uh, really interesting uh, bodies of work that are, that are focusing uh, on this, such as the Open Process Automation uh, Group, which is driven largely by Exxon Mobil, which drastically disrupts the way that technology is deployed at the plant. Nemour is another uh, organization which uh, d uh, deals with you know, things uh, such as sending uh, sensors to, uh, to cloud for, for analytics, and the Industrial Internet Consortium and Open Fog. These are all organizations that are, that are working to make sure that, uh, that services in the cloud, such as GE Predix or Siemens, MindSphere or SAP, th those systems are delivered uh, safely and, and securely. So, in, in terms of, of uh, this uh, fourth industrial revolution, back on the people side, we realize that in, in order to, um, to take advantage of, of this, there are some cultural uh, impediments to, move, to moving forward. And oftentimes, uh, you know, OT f uh, folks in the plant, they may come up with an idea to implement a new technology. So the immediate reaction is, let's just do it. Let's, you know, a lot of enthusiasm in the beginning and implement the technology. And then they find the data issue is too big or there's, there's too much legacy hardware or software they're not able to move forward. Or uh, even uh, more predominant, especially in the oil and gas or petrochemicals industry is, oh, let's not talk to that group. They just create uh, too many uh, problems. And, and uh, other industries such as uh, discrete, you don't have so much of a, of a segregation in ITOT, um, such as you do in the oil and gas industry, but th this is just uh, quite common. Um, or the other thing that happens is, is oh, we're just not ready for, for that much, uh, much change. Our customers of the technology aren't ready, or even our governance prohibits that approach. So wh what's happening is there's lots of interest in, uh, in uh, new technologies and uh, changing business processes, but often our approaches and our culture don't really help. So we end up with something that basically is, let's do a small project that's, uh, that's manageable. Now, 
This is probably one of the most common questions uh, that, that we get uh, asked when, uh, when, when companies you know, think about um, um, planning for technology or cybersecurity. So if you look on the left-hand side, uh, strategy and execution, most companies are really good at that. You know, forming the automation strategy, forming the IT strategy, making sure that you get the linkages, executing the portfolio, bringing in the main automation contractor or the system integrator. What tends to not happen is a lot, uh, companies don't step back from technology and realize what is the change that's being, being implemented and how does this impact my organization. So vision and organization are, are kind of just a little bit uh, left out. And just, I'm, I'm really curious, you know, with the, because this is mainly an oil and petrochemicals con, uh, uh, conference, um, how many people know the organizational development people in your organization? Just a show of hands. Is there anybody here from organizational de development? I see one over there. Okay, that's good. Right. But that's about what I was expecting, actually. So there are, there are some methodologies that companies follow. It's often not done with technology planning. But it's really important, we find, because we're talking about some disruptive technologies, you know, implementing analytics at the edge and wearable uh, technology, it's often really important to go back and really look at those fundamental organizations and the folks that are in those roles. So this is a, uh, a planning process, and this is uh, for actually from Amy Cates, the five-star method for organizational transformation. Many of your HR groups or your organizational development groups would, would also have something uh, very similar. But if you, if you look at the far left-hand side, uh, the very first thing is they go back and they look at the mission. And, and back to the slide that I illustrated before about the differences between IT and OT, the mission is fundamentally different between those two organizations. One is very, very people-oriented, very portfolio-centric, uh, and the other organization is very focused on assets, pumps, exchangers, uh, PID control, and, and making sure that everything works in the real-time environment. So it's really important when you're thinking about analytics or you're thinking about cybersecurity then you go back and you really look at reevaluate that fundamental mission. Uh, activities, um, these, are, these are the activities that are, that are completed by each department. And they're usually like uh, identify, design, configure, secure, implement, improve, manage, partner. Um, uh, so the, or the organization's value system normally um, helps to prioritize uh, those capabilities. And ca those capabilities are things like know-how, human element, relationship management, and work process dis discipline. And I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of research that, uh, that I, I finished up earlier this year that talks about the emerging role of the OT specialist. Because it's really important, it's, it, and we, I have the opportunity to talk to a lot of different uh, oil companies, chemical companies, and, and learn best practices on how they're setting up their organizations. Um, <clears throat> but before I, I, I get there, the, um, get the next slide here. Uh, I just want to share with you um, just an example of what the industry is thinking. When your peers are talking about the fourth industrial revolution or the industrial internet of things, your HR department or your learning, your development, or even your, your chief executive, they're actually not thinking about the technology or, e or even the cybersecurity yet. They're thinking about how to build that workforce. So this is a report from, uh, it actually comes from LinkedIn, which is a pretty trusted uh, source. There are several others uh, that are available as well. This is 2019 work Workplace Learning Report. So the findings are, uh, there's a recognition that uh, this effort on digital transformation um, and increased cybersecurity leaves a bigger skills gap. No surprise. Um, learning and development groups now have actually substantially larger budget constraints. There's a shift to uh, online uh, uh, learning for your technical uh, teams, and 87% of their teams say that they're going to grow or, or stay the same. 82% of the C-suite actively support in, in employee engagement and learning. However, we, we do find that when we do plant assessments and we talk to uh, people in the field, there's still the infrastructure is there, not there yet. They don't have mobile devices that have access to YouTube, but there's not enough provisioning uh, on the internet. You know, there's, um, they haven't addressed the security risk with opening up that, uh, that, that data yet. So, so we, even though there's the interest in creating on, online learning, especially in, uh, in industry, they're not, uh, not quite there yet. 
Uh, top focus areas, especially for uh, HR, uh, identify and assess those skills gaps. So what is it uh, that, you're, that you're missing? And go back to look at that, uh, that fundamental mission and the activities. Identify what skills are missing in OT. Do you get those skills and develop them internally? What ladders and progressions are in place? Or do you get those skills from a system integrator or, or an OT vendor? Uh, increase engagement in, with learning programs. Developing career frameworks. Uh, providing consist consistent learning uh, avail to employees globally. And this is all, this is cybersecurity learning. It's included uh, in, as part of this. And probably more important is because we're, we're, uh, we're, we're talking about um, some disruptive technologies and putting uh, uh, things like advanced analytics and predictive maintenance in front of your operator, uh, the OT specialists at your plant are really going to need some very important soft skills. Uh, it's important for companies to close gaps in those organizational, or, or, or close those organizational skills gaps using the methodology like the one I outlined. And this is just a, a, a little snapshot of, the, of some research I conducted this year. So uh, this was about the definition of the future OT role, given there's a lot of emerging technologies. So as part of this research, uh, uh, we had the, uh, the, the opportunity to interview and survey uh, 108 process manufacturers. Uh, we do this via surveys on the web, and we conducted several in interviews. Uh, mostly North America, Europe, some Middle East, and some Asia, but generally the respondents of this survey were very process uh, uh, industry-centric around the petrochemical uh, and uh, chemical and energies uh, industry. And what we find is, is interesting, the, the, the managers that I spoke to in these industries, they're thinking of developing better OT leaders, right? So it was a given, the fundamentals, uh, the skills that are required are about uh, knowledge of industrial control and safety, which is paramount. The secondly would be the application of this industrial control to the process. And of course, troubleshooting and problem solving, uh, emerging technologies that are borrowed from the IT space and moving down into the OT space are things like Docker and container uh, technologies, which are IT uh, concepts which are slowly making the way to the, the OT or the real-time environments. And, and things like analytics and um, what we call a citizen data scientist, which would be a process engineer which is using data that uh, they would normally uh, be, have available, but the data spectrum is getting a little bit wider. Um, but we do find is, is that the mo most of the OT leaders that we interviewed, uh, investment in people and career plans to include cybersecurity, risk assessments, and uh, incident management, uh, security and event monitoring, those are all core competencies for OT specialists and of course patch management, uh, network uh, routing and switching. And on the soft, and this, the soft skills, and this is where I, I, you know, I talk about the emerging technologies, it's selling predictive maintenance in your organization to an operator is, is not easy. When you're used to doing things a, a certain way, so new skills that are important for the fourth industrial revolution are things like cre creativity, analytical reasoning, coaching, being customer-centric, uh, strategic thinking, uh, curious about data, change leadership. Like These are all skills that have not been common, but moving into, uh, into this next generation of technology, clearly some different skills are, are going to be required. And just the, you know, a fundamental common thread that, I, that uh, we learned from interviewing these uh, 108 process manufacturers, by far most of them believe it's easier to train automation engineers IT skills than to train IT professionals with the requirements for the industrial environment. Uh, and of course, enterprise and corporate IT usually have limited understanding of the restrictions of the unique application of IT. And this doesn't mean that if you're an IT person in a company, you're never going to go to the real-time environment. That's not, case, that not the case, but the leaders are building uh, a ladder and progression and training programs to allow uh, folks to, to, to move uh, between uh, departments. And uh, finally, I'm just going to summarize. Uh, so these new edge to cloud uh, architectures, the, uh, the skill that, uh, that uh, uh, companies seem to value most is plant domain expertise. You've got to understand how, how that is applied in the real-time environment. 
And securing the life cycle of these systems is really part of that role. So leaders are also uh, uh, investing in people uh, before realizing the benefits of any digital transformation initiative or, or any major dis uh, disruptive technology project. So this translates into the employee experience and training investment uh, improvements. And uh, don't rely on a negotiation of functional responsibility between IT and OT, and this, this does ha happen from time to time. Uh, we find that leaders are using a proven methodology to ad systematically address those gaps. And finally, cybersecurity skills, we really believe, are part of the DNA of a modern OT specialist. And le leaders recognize this, and they invest in people and help to uh, develop uh, those uh, technical roles. And my last uh, comment is, uh, about this event is, a secure fourth industrial revolution requires, first and foremost, an investment in people, skills, and career development with the proper organizational design. And thank you very much. Uh, please look me up on LinkedIn. I blog all the time, uh, and I also use Twitter, so if, uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Do we have time for questions? Or? Yeah. I'll be around uh, uh, all day if you have any questions. Thank you very much.